Uh, my name is Brenda Churchill, and I'm here with, uh, uh, what's your name? Kendall Farrell. <laughs> Kendall Farrell, okay. <laughs> and uh, we're doing the Comedy of State uh, this afternoon as a, as a interactive, a little bit of an interactive talk show. Hey. Um, uh, now, when the title of the, <clears throat> of the program is Everyone Has a First Time, and, and I would say that this is my first time doing a uh, taped show, but I've actually done a couple shows <clears throat> already. One was for here, Channel 17. My friends on the T uh, also did a uh, show with me, and we love Nikki and Emoji. Oh, Nikki and Emoji are, are hot stuff, and all things LGBTQ. Out of uh, Orca Media down in Montpelier, also okay. did a, a nice interview for me, and uh, I'm just excited to have the opportunity to uh, get my message out and bring in some queer comics and and, uh, and have fun with uh, ha have fun with my friend Kendall. A little Thanks for having me, Brenda. You're welcome. I'm going to throw in a little disclaimer that anything that's said here today is actually my opinion and does not represent uh, anybody from the uh, folks that I represent as the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, what is it I am? I am the um, liaison for the LGBTQIA Alliance of Vermont and uh, as such we'll probably talk a little bit about that as well but I want to, want to get to my guest uh, Kendall Farrell. Kendall's from Burlington right now uh, and he's a, a, a stand-up comedian and this is your, I think this was your bio. Uh, yeah, I think we pulled it from yeah, my Facebook who, page. Whose wry, sly style and dry wit has made him a favorite from, uh, in his home state. He won the annual uh, Vermont Funniest Comedian Contest in 2015, profiled seven days, regular at the Comedy Club. He's open for headliners uh, all over uh, New England, performed on Night Train. Uh, and how, how was that? Was that a big, big club? Uh, Night Train, it's at, it's at a place called Littlefield in Park Slope, and Wyatt Snack hosts, and it's, it, the lineups they get are just like insane. That was a lot of fun, and Wyatt was super nice. Nice. Uh, locally, we got a course at the Vermont Comedy Club, Comedy and Crepes at the Skinny Pancake, Brews and Bros and uh, Foam Brewers, uh, Barn Party at uh, Zen Barn, and yep. uh, uh, something that ties in with our theme today, which is the United We Stand Up. Yeah. Uh, which is a, a political. That was uh, such a fun show. Stand. Annie Russell. Yeah. And I host that. Some some Vermonters might know Annie Russell from VPR. Yeah. Where she's, I think, now the deputy news director. She, uh, I, I'm, I was glad to see her. It was a lot of fun. Yes. That show was a. And also very show funny. Was a riot. Oh, she was. She was. Um, keeping with the, both the political theme and the first time uh, uh, thing, I, I'm going to relate a little bit about my first time uh, with a Pride Parade. And this was about three years ago. I got to uh, uh, pull my, or I got to drive my uh, big red Jeep up <laughs> Church Street. It was a panic. I had people waving, screaming, shouting. And I, I was just hopeful I wasn't running over anybody. And the, behind me was a trailer full of my uh, gay young friends bouncing, <laughs> bouncing to RuPaul. Uh, and so I was, uh, I was also uh, honored this year with my friend uh, Craig Mitchell to be co-marshal. Uh, oh, I, I asked him to change it to Marshmallow, but they didn't quite get to Marshmallow. <laughs> but uh, Craig and I uh, got to I'm go I'm surprised up. you got resistance on that. <laughs> Craig and I got to go up uh, Church Street together. We were, we were laughing and, and joking all the way up through. And then I, I got beautiful roses from uh, my friend Meg, and it was, just, it was just a really wonderful day. I had a blast. Yeah. Were you in this year's Pride Parade? I, yeah, they did it in Battery Park this year, which was super fun. I missed the parade part of it, okay. but I was there for the big party afterwards. I had to, <laughs> I had to come, I had to leave work early and then go back to work afterwards. Oh my goodness. But uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, the whole park was packed. Now you, um, you and Annie do a routine, or have mm -hmm. done a routine. Yeah. And it, um, the one I saw happened to be down in our state's capital. But you've been all over the state doing this uh, this routine. Yeah, yeah, we took it. So the the show is called United We Stand Up, and it's like a politically themed comedy show. So what we do is we bring a bunch of stand up comedians in, uh, some from Vermont, some from out of state, uh, sort of a, a mix of people, and just people who have sort of politically relevant material. And then at the end of the show, uh, there's an interview with a local politician or okay. political figure in general. So. Uh, we've had David Zuckerman on the show. He was our guest at the Vermont Comedy Club. Uh, city Councilor Max Tracy from Burlington. Uh, the newest city councilor, Ali Jang, we had him right after he was elected. And uh, yeah, so it's a, a lot of fun and Annie and I love doing it. Annie is moving 
too. I heard that. So the series is on a, a hiatus for for a while. Okay. But, uh, uh, you're, and you're moving. As long as you mention that, we'll just talk about it. You're taking off and going to the true. big the Big Apple for uh, brighter and bigger things to do. The Big Apple. Yeah. I uh, a lot of a lot of Vermont comedians have for, former Vermont comedians are living there now. So I'm excited to join my uh, ex my fellow expatriates. You think you'll be able to find a political uh, venue to, to, to bring New York politics to the forefront? Yeah, I don't, it has been kind of on my mind because I have no journalism skills. <laughs> uh, so Annie was like really important <laughs> to the show because uh, she knows about like journalistic ethics and all, you know, she's you know, a very talented interviewer. So she kind of would like book all the political guests and she spearheaded that part and I would kind of book the comedians and sure. manage that part of the show. But I've been thinking a lot about ways that we could keep it going. Or Annie's going to be in Chicago. Maybe I would go visit her. Or maybe she could come visit me. And, uh, Annie, I'm pitching this to you. I hope you're watching. <laughs> that sounds like a road trip. <laughs> yeah. Um, in any case, what uh, what would you like to do with uh, today on the show? What have you What have you got in mind? Oh, I guess if we're talking about first first times, yep, that's uh, good. <laughs> I have a funny story about the first time I went to a pride parade. Uh, the first time I ever went to a Pride Parade, I was there for probably like a half an hour before I heard some like, <laughs> this poor like dis disenfranchised straight bro <laughs> who was like walking by and he was like, Psh, man, well, why don't we have a straight Pride Parade? <laughs> I just remember thinking like, I don't know, man, but uh, if I had to guess, I would say there probably just aren't enough straight parade planners out there. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I don't know who he thinks is like stopping him though. Like, go nuts. Are you kidding me? I don't know about you, but I would love nothing more than to see that. <laughs> nothing would delight me more. Oh my. I don't know what it's going to look like. I keep like imagining it's just going to be like a bunch of really drunk people in the parking lot of like a Home Depot. <laughs> just like barbecuing and listening to like Kid Rock. <laughs> Straight pride. <laughs> there you go. Um, we'll we'll put it in the bin to, to check on later <laughs> and, and see what we can do there. That is just a joke, of course. Of course uh, it is. Yeah, straight people will never take Home Depot away from lesbians. Oh, I think we we all know that. <laughs> no, that's a that is a that is a great place to shop. Yeah, I've been, I've been told. <laughs> yeah, there's another local comedian who has a really funny joke. I won't give it away in case you have her on, but about how the hottest place to meet single lesbians in Burlington is at Pet Food Warehouse. Wow. I'll have to make a note of that. Yeah, right then. But then <laughs> Good I gotta, thing you brought But your then pet. I gotta get a pet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Suze has a pet. I think she just hangs out there. <laughs> She's just like <laughs> oh, trolling I'm, for I'm pussy sure. at the Pet Food Warehouse. It can be done. It can I be think done. she has done it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Suze is watching too. Yeah, we'll have to get her on the show to, to refute or, or substantiate those, Suze would those be a claims. Great guest. I think she would too. Uh, she just wound up uh, her first year up in St. Albans uh, last night. I think yeah. you guys did the show at uh, uh, what's the venue that Twigs? Was, Twigs. Yeah. yeah, that's always a fun show. A lot of local entertainment up there, and she's yeah. been doing that show now for a year. And I've been to a couple of those shows, and they're great. They're always great. Uh, yeah. She's got a rapport with the audience, and she can warm you up and get yeah. anybody laughing. I'm just She's curious, great. when when you're t doing a comedy routine, are you able to discern the differences between uh, a gay crowd, like with your LOL uh, comedy series, and a straight crowd? And how do, you, how do you change that up? How do you do that different? Yeah, well, I think like it depends on maybe not if they're like straight or gay, but just like where <laughs> where where you are. Okay. Uh, like. I think the fur the further away from cities you go, like there are little progressive enclaves and stuff, but um, like you go like you know, there used to be shows we were just talking about out in Morrisville, Moog's okay. Place. Yeah, used to be shows at Moog's Place, and like you go out there and people like they have no. It's not that they don't like gay people, but they just have no idea what Grinder is, <laughs> or, or you know, like they don't know about like. I think they're just ill informed about. Gay, gay sex. So it was pretty shocking for them, I, I can for these that, rural that, audiences. Yeah, that might be a tough venue. I, I will tell you that uh, my friend Christine showed her documentary Denial at the, uh, at the library in, in Montpelier this past week, and uh, it was a predominantly gay crowd, and they all got 
the jokes, the innuendo, all the overlays that were in there and all the all the yeah. things. And I said, <laughs> I, I was asking her afterward, I said, where has that happened before? She says, Spain. I said, what? <laughs> she says, well, they, they had subtitles and they laughed at everything that was, That's so funny. was spot on. So I said, well, that must mean that the written word is, is stronger than the spoken word, yeah. but, but only in Spanish. I suppose so. <laughs> I was going to take a, a few minutes to, to review what um, what I do within the LGBTQ Alliance. And yes. I, I'm going to kind of read a, a, what is our mission and purpose statement. And it, the LGBTQIA Alliance of Vermont comprised of representatives from a range of LGBTQIA organizations and individuals from the broader Vermont community. Our mission is to anticipate and collaboratively respond to proposed and enacted laws, policies, action, and community level crisis that impact LGBTQIA Vermonters. Uh, the Alliance provides expert advice to elected officials, pol political activists, state agencies, uh, community-based and professional organizations, and other interested parties on representing and protecting the interests and rights of, the LG of LGBTQIA Vermonters. Uh, the group seeks to fairly represent the collective voice of the LGBTQIA Vermonters through uh, advocacy, community building, education, and representation. Now, within the context of the alliance, there's there's five organizations that are our cor cornerstone or original groupings, and, and um, I, I don't know if you know them all. Can you can you can you guess? I think Green Mountain Crossroads is probably one of them. They are. And Outright Vermont. Outright Vermont is, yeah. The Pride Center. Yeah. Um, God, I'm trying not to cheat and look at my sheet here. <laughs> <laughs> I did provide answers um, to the quiz. Yeah, I got three of them. Okay, can so I cheat? Yeah, you can cheat. Oh, Vermont Cares. Oh, those guys are great. Yeah. I thought they were part of the Pride Center. Uh, no, uh, Peter Jacobson's ex executive director there, and actually I, I'm going to review some of the fundraisers he's got coming up. There's an AIDS walk in uh, City Hall Park on October 1st to 10 a.m. I would go right to their website for information on that to register and uh, by all means contribute uh, to that. Um, it's important. Yeah, Rainbow Umbrella of, of Central Vermont actually uh, put on the first uh, Pride Solidarity March that coincided with uh, the official Pride date this past year and it was very successful. We had uh, people represented from all communities there and cool. we had speakers afterwards. Uh, that is anticipated to be again next year. Um, oh, great. The Pride Center just completed the, the Pride celebration two weeks ago and I mentioned that, uh, that was fun. Craig and I were, were uh, co-grand marshmallows. We're going to adopt that, co-grand marshmallows. Yeah. I think you guys should push for that. Uh, I think we should. <laughs> Green Mountain Crossroads, which is down in uh, Brattleboro, Vermont. I was just down there a couple of days ago. Uh, H.B. Lozito is uh, sponsoring again a very successful uh, two-day seminar out in the country. It's October 27th. And again, go to uh, Green Mountain Crossroads to uh, register and find out more information. I'm one of the presenters uh, for that as well. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So, uh, And lastly, we have Outright to Vermont. Not leastly, though, Dana Kaplan. Uh, new executive director there. Uh, he is having a fire truck pole fundraiser on Church Street, September 30th. Oh, I think they've done this before, haven't they? They have done it yeah. before. Have you participated or watched it? Yeah, I think the comedy club put together a team to be part of it last year. <laughs> and I, I was out of town, I think, but it looked, I was really sad to miss it. Big fundraiser for our friends uh, at Outright. And one of the things that uh, you can do is you can go on their website and you can look at their uh, information there and there are one, interestingly one of the unique things that they've come up with for fundraising is that they've found individuals that will post their fundraiser on their website mm. so if you're interested in doing that uh, follow some of the guidelines there and post that and you too can earn uh, funds for the fire truck poll or better yet sponsor a team be on a team just come out and have fun uh, I guarantee the weather that day is going to be beautiful and crisp and cool I promise it will be. You promise? Yeah. I promise. Yeah, Tom Messner and I have been talking. <laughs> um, but oh, yeah. So, you know, again, these are the organizations that I, I represent to the State House. And uh, as nonprofits, they're always working very hard to, uh, uh, to generate funds to keep their staff. Uh, they're partially grant funded, but contributions go, go a long, a long, long way. Um, a couple of the things that I, I also wanted to mention are what we've identified as, as challenges uh, that are currently being confronted by Vermont's LGBTQIA 
communities. Uh, we're doing that through some interesting things that I've uncovered this, this summer. Uh, one of the things that I'm working on is uh, um, the uh, changing driver's licenses to add uh, the letter X to it. We've been working with folks uh, at several different levels to uh, see if we can make that happen. And that, that uh, I remember, I think we chatted about that a little bit and it sounds like there's, it, we're not going to have to do that through the legislature. Yeah, we're, we're actually looking to do it administratively, which is really a uh, huge cost savings because if you don't have to run it through the, the legislative process, um, yeah. it, it is part of the DMV's uh, upgrade to their system. So we're we're asking that we, uh, we're, we're working to ask if we can get that inserted in there. And, and that actually follows what Canada's doing with their um, passports now. Oh, I didn't even know that. Uh, they're, they're actually, uh, they're adding X to that. New York is working on similar legislation. It's already been adopted in Oregon uh, and California. So states that are much larger than us, including a whole country, uh, are, are working towards this. And I think it'll be great for young folks who are coming up and have to put their first legal document in, yeah. and they don't have to lie. They say, well, I'm not M, and I'm not F, and X works. Uh, X will work uh, for lots of folks. Yeah. Um, that is one of the things we also have coming up in the Senate this, uh, this session um, is H333. This bill proposes to require that any single-use toilet in any public building or place of public accommodations be identified as gender-free. I mean, my gosh, who, who wouldn't want to have the opportunity to use one or the other when there's a line at one and you can go in the other? Yeah, I can, <laughs> I always <laughs> use the probably a way. joke there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like I, you're not going to get in trouble for going in the other, in the, I've never gotten in trouble for using a women's room before. Mm -hmm. And I use it all the time because uh, they're always nicer. <laughs> and also they're like, there's usually, there's always some old man like cleaning the men's room. I don't know, I've run into that everywhere <laughs> I go. That happens. I, I know there's a joke there. Um, <laughs> I, I think you're right and I think they have both of the. There's uh, always some sort of like mess that's being cleaned up in the men's room. <laughs> it always has like an out of order sign. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm hopeful that this will go right through. It did get through the house. I did testify there uh, and uh, I, I believe we'll have have a good uh, good result with that. Um, I've been also getting out to meet folks, which has been uh, really interesting. I, I've got a literal laundry list of folks that I've been uh, able to f have time with. And you know, just from a, an educational standpoint, anybody who's listening to this, anybody who's a, a citizen, you don't even have to have been legally able to vote, but uh, these folks will talk to you. They'll, they'll definitely uh, definitely spend some time with you and mm -hmm. they want to hear what your concerns are and I would I would really suggest that you look up your local representative and, and uh, speak with them um, most recently I've been I've talked to Phil Scott TJ Donovan uh, Becca Ballant Tristan Tolino Celine Colburn uh, Brian Chia uh, Sina who is also a, a really talented DJ here in the area yes uh, Barbara Rachelson um, Deanna Gonzalez Jill Krawinski Connor Casey, who's the um, executive director of the Vermont uh, Democrat, Vermont Democrats. Um, oh my goodness, Mark, Mark Hughes had me on his uh, radio program uh, a couple weeks ago. How was that? It was interesting. He wanted me to come down and co-host with him at Goddard College at 7 a.m. and I said, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> not only the drive would be fun, but uh, uh, just getting down there in one piece would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're gonna do that again. Uh, Cindy Weed and Dan Connor up in my neck of the woods uh, have been always open to conversations with me. Uh, also have spoken with uh, um, Senate Leader Pro Tem Tim Ash, uh, Speaker of the House uh, Mitzi Johnson, uh, and it, it's really been great to have the ear of the Lieutenant Governor as well. Like you said, David Zuckerman yes. uh, came and sat down with you. So yeah, he was that's, very that's nice. That's pretty enjoyable. Taylor, what are you doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> You're wrecking the place. Um, but we've we've. All of these folks have, have been identified as, as folks that we can go and speak with, and they're very open to conversation. Um, we're, I'm really lucky to have worked with, uh, and this will be just a little bit of prop for my uh, co-liaison, Keith Ghostland, who has been around a long time, was on the Freedom to Marry uh, Caucus for the men, and uh, uh, he has been both my trainer, my teacher, my mentor, and a friend, and it's been 
it's been a blessing to have somebody bring me through this process. Like I said, I always tell people I wish I had uh, paid more attention to civics in high school. Yeah. <laughs> to, know, to know what's going on. Yeah. And that, that's kind of, kind of that. Um, so, let's see, where are we? What have I left out? What, what, what do we want to want to cover? Oh my gosh! All, I was kind of curious about what uh, what your experience has been like working with Governor Scott and his his new administration. Well, it's kind of interesting because we uh, had early on identified that we'd like to get in and speak with the governor. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows he's got a two year term and he's mm -hmm. you know, about about a third of the way through the the, the two both the terms. Yeah. And we had the opportunity to sit down and speak with him uh, last week. It, it was really good. We. Um, uh, had about an hour of his time, mm -hmm. and he asked a lot of questions, and Keith uh, Ghostland and myself were able to provide a lot of information and, and things that he was uh, genuinely interested in. I, I feel good having a governor that will take the time to sit down and listen, and uh, folks within his office also are, are remarkable. Um, we had a, a great conversation afterwards with uh, Rachel Feldman, mm -hmm. and we spent uh, uh, some time discussing some of the nuances of the conversation that we we had with Governor Scott. Yeah. T.J. Donovan, very much the same way, uh, very open and, and, and asking questions. And uh, if you ever thought law enforcement wasn't on your side, you need to spend some time with the man because, uh, as the enforcer of all of our laws, uh, he is definitely watching out for us. Uh, I now have his personal phone number. I don't know if he wants me to know that on TV, but if you can, we put it on the screen. There, no, no. <laughs> I don't think that'd be appropriate, but what I would like to say is that if anybody has, uh, I'm just gonna text him every night like you up. <laughs> <laughs> That's somebody else you're thinking. Of. Um, <laughs> one of the things that we did cover was was uh, how to report uh, an incident, and he advocates that if anybody in the community has a, a, a incidence of bias, uh, any type of hate speech, anything that maybe we're observing in other states and it filters into Vermont. Mm -hmm. uh, if you let me know, I will let them know, uh, and it may be part of a larger uh, case study, or they may already have information or complaints about the individual or group. So nothing is too people in public service. You mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. They they do have a chain uh, between the state and the state's attorney general, the FBI, local law enforcement. Um, as much as they have bad press, they also have some good press, and they have good people that work there, and TJ's one of them, so I'm really glad to have him on our side. Uh, he, yeah. mar he marched in the pride parade with us. Oh, no way. Which was really cool, <laughs> really cool. So we had him and several people from his office that were, that were in there with us. Uh, cool. You know, being able to talk to folks or call them up or send them an email really is one of the strengths that I think I have to, in the position that I'm doing, because if I say, can we get a meeting? Nobody's declined time with me. Yeah, no one has, for United We Stand Up, only, the only people who have said no to the show are Republicans. <laughs> it's been very hard to book a conservative, which is too bad because Annie and I are nice people. Uh, but uh, we've had, yeah, everybody has been, that's the nice thing about living in a small state is that your public officials are all very accessible. And uh, we've had great luck booking people for the show. And the thing is about Vermont politicians, almost every single politician we've interviewed has either had to leave early or, or get there late because they have some sort of animal that they're taking care of. <laughs> well, Everybody, David is a farmer. Yes, he is. David, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, could only do Annie and my show if his horse didn't give birth that day. Which is a that's weird a, that's a booking. Show, that's a showstopper. Show <laughs> we had to book around Speaking that. Speaking of Republicans, um, I have not had uh, uh, the opportunity yet to reach out to Republicans, but I will tell you that the... Well, Governor uh, Scott is Well, Governor Republican. Scott is, is the top Republican, but, you know, with that said, he should be accessible to everybody, and I think that the, all the electorate should. My own county of Franklin, I have the, uh, um, the Senate Minority Leader, mm -hmm. uh, Dustin Degree, and... Uh, He's on my list, uh, actually, in the next couple of weeks to reach out. So I, I anticipate uh, reaching across the aisle, so to speak. Well, that's good. And, and I don't identify as either Democrat or Republican. And I, I know that many people have very strong feelings uh, within the LGBTQ mm -hmm. community. But uh, keep an open mind, uh, and I will when, when we sit down. Yeah. yeah, I think it's certainly important to just talk to people as individuals 
But I wonder how Governor Scott, it seems like he was interested in what you were saying and was responsive to the issues you were bringing up. I wonder how he feels about his party's hard line on those same issues. If you've noticed uh, any of the press that's come out of the governor's office lately, he has denounced the uh, uh, rec rescission of DACA. He has uh, also come out with 10 other governors mm -hmm. for uh, the current health care program, not the repeal and replace that uh, the current federal uh, Republicans want to do. Uh, he understands the people of Vermont. And while the nuances of taxes and teachers and things might have uh, might have gotten in, into uh, a different category with some folks, I think sincerely he uh, he thinks about our community uh, and and really does. Um, I I know that Republicans will be Republicans and Democrats will be Democrats, but uh, with that with that said, I think it's a it's a pretty good state for some partisan work and passing of the first part through uh, H333 through the House uh, had very little objection as well as some of the other things that we're doing. So I'm, I'm looking forward to working with everybody and the governor and the legislature is, is, uh, is where we're headed. Yes. You got any more comedy for us because I'm really dying to hear some jokes. Oh yeah, should we end on a joke? Well, we could, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, well, I don't know, if are you on, are you on any dating apps, Brenda? Um, you, that I admit to? <laughs> that uh, you admit to? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say uh, one or two. One or two? Do you mind if I ask which ones? Um, if I could remember them, that's how, op that's how often I go in there. Okay, uh, Cupid's a common one. Okay, Cupid is a lot one of the people ones are, on, Yeah, uh, a lot of people are on. And that seems Cupid. fairly that seems fairly LGBTQ friendly. So. Oh really? Yeah. I haven't tried it. Well, mostly L. So that's it's mostly. L. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. <laughs> it could be. It could be. There's not much for me there. Yeah, I don't know. I am on Grinder, and and Tinder. Look me up. And uh, <laughs> self promotion. I, uh, I uh, okay, Grinder, and um, yeah, being on Grinder is <laughs> is fun, but it also makes me like terrified of getting murdered. Because <laughs> tell, tell me about that. You really in the Green Mountain State, you might you might feel like you're getting murdered. It makes me nervous about getting murdered because if you get murdered, you just lose any sense of privacy you once had. They just, the cops go through all your stuff, and I just feel like I don't need that kind of hassle in my death, you know? So what do they go through? What do they, what do well, they I would, they, if I got murdered, they would have to go through my grinder account, and that is absolutely my worst nightmare. Is that on your PC or, or cell phone? It's or, on or my it? phone. Oh boy. Which, is, yeah. That's pretty damning. They're, these poor cops are not even going to know what this guy's <laughs> face looks like. They're just going to have to work backwards. <laughs> <laughs> like a picture of his like headless torso. There's no registry for that headless torso pictures? No, it's just going to, I'm so afraid it's going to be all over the evening news, like splashed across, <laughs> like, have you seen this faceless torso? <laughs> Contact the Burlington PD. Oh my goodness. And beware that he could have shaved by now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's my worst nightmare. I don't know if everybody that. will get that, but I know all, all of the <laughs> folks who are gay will probably. Uh, yes. Will, you will have feel to be that. gay to be on Grinder. I think that's. Uh, you yeah, can use it. You can use it to find people and gay people in your area. You could also use it to avoid gay people in your area. How you use it is your business. Okay, I'm gonna um, start to wrap up uh, a little bit. I, I got the 30 minute notice, so <laughs> okay. rather than stretch this into a, yeah. a, a 45 minutes, yeah. uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, my um, my co liaison Keith uh, Ghostland and myself are planning a, uh, a road trip, uh, actually to four different locations uh, this fall. We want to talk to the LGBTQIA community without uh, any filters. We need to know what's going on in there, and we want to be able to have a very firm uh, uh, commitment to you guys as well as um, my organization that we're representing you, not not ourselves and not our own ideas. So we need to hear from you and, and we'll announce that uh, uh, pretty broadly. Um, I am going to take a, a moment to introduce my next guest, uh, Taylor Radke. Uh, she's a, a young queer comedian and, and a friend and a, also I, I read here this can't be right. You're you uh, you're recovering from a near uh, uh, fatal accident, plane crash. Something like that. Okay. Well, <laughs> were you trying to fly, or, or was it? Oh, it was a, a skateboard. Oh, I must have misread that. <laughs> cool. We'll do it. Yeah, and you can find her at uh, Zero Gravity 
uh, pour in your favorites uh, hopefully soon. And I want to also give a shout out to Zero Gravity for uh, their great contribution during the, the Pride celebration. They did a, uh, a promotion with, with beer, which is okay with me, uh, and donated back to the Pride Center. Uh, and I want to I want to really thank uh, uh, Kendall uh, for being here with us today and well, my nice. my show debut and uh, being the uh, the beautiful co-host <laughs> that you are. Well, and, thanks for uh, having me, Brenda. I know you're going to be successful going down to New York City, and and uh, we'll see you again when you come up to Vermont. You certainly will uh, be invited. I'm sure anywhere, everywhere. I hope so. <laughs> okay, um, and uh, this is Brenda Churchill for the Comedy of State. Some news and some queer comics and. Hopefully a fresh perspective on uh, for you guys, and we'll see you soon. I want to thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening, or day, or night. Yeah. <laughs>